Hey guys, welcome back to part 2 of mediator pattern. I hope you remember our simple mediator implementation. If you have not watched part 1, then I strongly recommend you to watch that before watching this. This is a continuation video on mediator pattern. Here we will not go into what is mediator pattern and how we can implement it. Here we will see the real-time generic implementation of mediator pattern. I will use a WPF MVVM application. But you know what, the mediator implementation that I will be doing here can be used as it is in any application including MVC web application as well. As you have seen in part 1, this implementation just loops through the subscriber list and sends only one type of message. It cannot send different type of domain messages. We will solve this problem here. So let's get started. So let me create a WPF application. Let me do the bare minimum implementation, basically the views and view models and come back. So I'm done with the views and view model implementation. Let's go through it quickly. So I have couple of folders here, kept all the product images in the images folder. Then I have created only one model product with few properties. I have a resource dictionary with some styles including this in app.xaml file. Then I have my view models. So this is a phone view model loading phone product here. This is a private method implemented down here. It just adds couple of products in a list and populates our product observable collection which is declared here. This is basically getting binded to our view. Note that in real time, we will use a separate data access class to load the product info from some repository. I have a publish command here, which is again binded to a button in the view. When user clicks the button, the control comes here. This is an empty method as of now, but later we will use this to publish our messages. There is one more property received message from. We will populate this property once we implement mediator pattern. That's it for our view model. Similarly, I have implemented other view models like ring view model and watch view model. Now let's look into one of our view. So this is phone view setting data context here, which is our phone view model instance created a data template for displaying our product info. This is our communication information area. This will be used to display the message received from other view models. We will use this once we implement mediator pattern. Remember received message property, which is binded here. Then we are displaying our product in a list box and finally publish command button. Again, similarly, other two views are also implemented. Now in our main view model, created three columns and just showing all three views. With this, let's run the application and see. So we get this simple view. We have the communication area here. This is our list box with the product detail and three command buttons corresponding to each view. See, all these buttons does nothing right now. Remember, our publish method is empty. Now, let's say our view model wants to publish some messages so that other interested view model can receive the message and take some actions as per their business need. Let me create few message class, which the view models will use to share info. So, I have created three message class here, phone view model and Ring view model has already created the message but does not know how to publish it so that other view model can use it. We will implement mediator pattern and help this view model to publish it. Do let me know in comment section in case you need this project, I will provide it via GitHub. Now let me implement my mediator classes and come back. 
So, I have implemented all the mediator classes. Let's go through it. I have iMessage interface here. This is an empty interface. This must be implemented by all our messages. See, I have already implemented it to all our message that wants to involve in communication. It basically tells that any class that has implemented this interface should be treated as a message. This is iMediator interface. This looks similar to the one that we have already implemented in our console application here. Publish method publishes the message and subscribe method will be used by the subscribers to add themselves to the mediator. But there are some differences, right? See, this just publishes a string. It means this method can only publish a string message. But if you see here, it takes iMessage. It means it can publish anything that implements iMessage. We are doing this because we want our mediator to handle different types of messages. Now, if you see the subscribe method, it takes an object. In our context, this will be an instance of our view models who wants to subscribe the messages. We have generic i subscriber. If we see our previous implementation, it was not generic. See, it just receives one type of message. That's a string. But here, it receives a generic message of type T. This is our singleton mediator class, just ensuring that we have one mediator instance throughout the application. If you are using some kind of container, then you don't need this class. You can use container to have a singleton instance of this class. Now, before going through our concrete mediator class, let me write the communication code in view model because this will help in understanding our concrete mediator class. So let's do that. Let's say phone view model wants to publish phone info. So it has to basically implement iSubscriber with the message type. Let's implement this. It has a handle method, but we will not be using it for this view model as it does not want to handle phone message. Instead, it wants to publish a message. So for publishing a message, what we need? Yes, the mediator. Let's get that. Let's create a class level variable mediator. Let's get our singleton mediator instance. Now let's publish it using this instance. We want to publish this phone message, so pass it. That's it for publishing. Now, anyone who is interested in this message can subscribe it. Let's say RingView model is interested. So, let's implement iSubscriber with the interested message. That's phone message. Let's implement it. So, we get this handle method. Let's populate our received message from property. Remember, this is binded to our view. Okay, what is pending now? Yes, we have to subscribe this view model for the messages. So, let's get our mediator and subscribe. Perfect. Now, whenever we click publish button in phone view model, ring view model should get the notification. Let's see that. See, it gets the notification. We will do some more message interactions later. But before that, let's go through our last concrete mediator class. This might be a little complex. Please pay attention and do comment and let me know if you have any question. So, it implements iMediator and implemented these two methods subscribe and publish subscribe method receives view model as an object calls a private method to get all the messages subscribed by the subscriber 
Let's go to this method and see. Here it gets the type of the view model, then calls get all messages. Let's go in there. Here it is trying to get all the interfaces that the incoming type has implemented. In our case, that will be our subscriber of type phone message. Then it gets the message type that will be again phone message. Then returns all the messages. Then it loops through all the messages. Calls this add to subscribe list method. This piece of code creates the instance of subscribers for given message private class. and adds it to our main dictionary. The key here is the message type. Then with this instance, it calls this add method, where we add all the subscribers to this private list. And whenever we call publish, it picks all the subscribers for that particular message type and invokes its handle method. So, this publish method receives iMessage type. You can see here, we are sending this message which is of type iMessage. Gets the message type. Checks if the type is available in the subscriber dictionary. And calls publish on the instance that we have stored in the dictionary against the message type. Then it comes down to the publish method and calls all the handle method of all the subscribers. I try to make the code as simple as possible, but yes, still, at first glance, it could be a little difficult to understand. If you have any questions, do drop in comments. Let me know if you need this project as well. Okay, now for some time, you just forget about the mediator implementation. Let's say your architect has already implemented this, and you are there just to use this communication mechanism in your view models. So let's play around by implementing few interactions between view model. Let me run this once again. So phone view model is publishing a message which is subscribed by ring view model. But ring view model and watch view model does not publish any message. Say phone view model is interested in a notification from watch view model whenever user clicks this publish message. Let's do that. What we should do? As mentioned earlier, we have nothing to do with this mediator implementation now. This is a generic implementation to handle all type of messages and we are completely done with this. We can use this code in any application for object interactions. So, coming back to our view model, we just have to use this mediator in our view models. Let's publish a message from watch view model. So, what should be done? Yes, implement a subscriber of type watch message. Let's implement the interface. For publishing the message, we need mediator, right? So let's create a class level variable to hold our mediator instance. Get our mediator. Let's go to the place from where we want to publish. Let's create an appropriate message. We have already created a message class here with one property. And most importantly, it implements iMessage. Remember, our mediator implementation will recognize this type as a message only if it implements iMessage. Let's populate it in our view model. Now let's publish using our mediator instance. Pass our message. That's it. Now, whoever is interested can subscribe for the watch message. As mentioned earlier, phone view model is interested in the notification from this view model, right? 
so let's go ahead and subscribe it again for subscribing we have to implement i subscriber of type watch message let's do that let's implement it so down here we should have a handle method let's populate our received message from property with the incoming message from watch view model now let me ask you are we done if your answer is no then you are right because right now mediator does not have the instance of this view model then how do it call our handle method right so we have to subscribe and for subscribing we need our mediator instance let's get that hey we already have the instance let's use it and subscribe this subscribe is just sending this view model instance to mediator i have very clearly explained all these concepts in my first part if you have not watched that then i recommend you to watch that as well so with this we are done with wiring up our interactions let's run it and see see now phone view model receives a notification from watch view model by now i hope you already have some idea when to use this pattern let's quickly list it down before wrapping up this video as mentioned when you have an enterprise application worked by many teams and you want to have an uniform object communication mechanism across the objects it means you don't want that every developer should use their own way of communicating between the objects in that case this pattern can be very useful this pattern will also help in the application where you have lots of objects with very complicated dependencies this pattern will help you to encapsulate the object interaction logics in a separate mediator class this will simplify our code to a huge extent next you can use it when you have group of objects that are dependent on each other but how the object should interact is not known at compile time or maybe you decide to communicate or not to communicate only at run time as you know you can subscribe and unsubscribe at any point in time using this pattern so in such cases you should go for this pattern finally as like other patterns this pattern also provides a loosely coupled design by avoiding complex object dependency graph that's all for today i hope this was helpful If you like the video don't forget to subscribe the channel and drop in your comments for all the future videos on C# and other technologies thanks